VR is for horror, what 3D was for Jaws. Only lots, lots better. So here's my annual roundup of the best horror games for the Quest platform. Project Terminus takes place in Paris and sees you exploring the Parisian subway and suburbs as you try and survive in this post-apocalyptic world. With supplies low and your flashlight running out, avoiding what lurks in the shadows becomes paramount to survival. This is a game that can be run solo but really comes into its own when played with others as this is one of the few games out there that can be played as an up to four player co-op game. Playing with your mates really does elevate this game above others and makes up for some of the more unique features of the game. The developers are constantly releasing updates for the game though and so any quirks are typically resolved in timely fashion. The game itself will have three separate releases but in a unique twist each release or act are being released as part of the main game but the price of the game increases when each act is released. So when the game was first released with Act 1, it cost $19.99, this is US dollars. When Act 2 was released, that increased to $24.99, so I would expect that price to increase to $29.99 when Act 3 is released. So if you do want the game, I'd get in early. It's a great way for the developers to reward those early adopters of the game. I definitely recommend checking it out with your mates. Into the Radius is a single player survival horror game set in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world with only your guns and wits to keep you alive. You will have to fight deadly enemies, dodge dangerous anomalies and collect artifacts on your way to the center of the Radius to find your way out. This is a true survival game that will see you managing your resources and your stamina as much as you will be shooting down the enemies that lie in wait. Exploration and scavenging is the only way you will survive this unforgiving dystopian environment. The resource element of the game has been done well though, so it doesn't feel like a complete grind having to get all the resources you need, because as well as finding items in the wild, you can also buy them at the store too. Even your weaponry degrades over time. You can however clean your guns back at base to keep them lasting a little bit longer, and so they don't jam up when you need them the most. It's this attention to detail that really does add to the survival ethic of the game. If survival games rather than jump scares is your flavour of horror that you prefer, then you should definitely check it out. Leaving survival based and thought based games fully behind it, after the fall is an online co-op zombie fun fest, it's basically left for dead but in VR. You can play this on your own with AI teammates, but it really comes into its own when you play it with others online. Mowing down hordes of zombies as a team just feels so much more rewarding. The core of this game is about repetition, and I know that sounds a bad thing, but hear me out. The game is all about upgrading your weapons and trying levels at harder and harder difficulties. Complete a map to upgrade your weapon, then try it again at a harder level. If you're the type of player that loves upgrades and going for high scores, then this game is definitely for you. The base game, when launched, was pretty short, with only five maps available. However, the recent Reclamation update sees even more maps, weaponry and features being added to the game at no extra cost. Updates are often released for it too, ensuring that any bugs are fixed pretty quickly. And not only is this game playable on the Quest 2, but it's also cross-play with anyone else who might be playing on PC VR or even PS VR. And that's awesome. If a no-nonsense, left for dead, zombie horde, VR experience is what you're after, then this is exactly what you need. And finally, one of the games of the year that I've been waiting for, Resident Evil 4. You play as Leon Kennedy, whose mission it is to rescue the US president's daughter, who has been kidnapped by a mysterious cult. And from the moment the game starts, it's a downward spiral into the horror that is any Resident Evil game. The original Resident Evil 4 game is often regarded as the best Resident Evil game to date, and so I was super excited to see a VR version of this game appear. And my nostalgia was more than satisfied. From mixing different herbs to create potions to wielding the various weapons, the storyline was as good as it ever was, and playing it in VR just adds another dimension to it. Even for those that haven't played the original or its various re-releases, this is a fantastic game. The inventory system is easy to use, the weaponry is easy to handle, and the movement mechanics are smoothly done. You can even use teleportation for those that are more prone to motion sickness. There are lots of cutscenes in the game though that take you out of your VR world and present as a 2D screen in front of you. And this is most jarring when you jump out of windows, as it really breaks the immersive experience. Since the launch though, they have also added the Mercenaries expansion pack to the game at no extra cost. So now you have even more content to play. Minor grumbles aside though, this is an awesome game. If you're a fan of the genre, then you will not be disappointed. And a quick notable mention to one game that isn't out yet. 
Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution follows on from the events of the original Walking Dead Saints and Sinners game. And if it's anything like the first one, which I loved, then I cannot wait for this one to arrive sometime in late 2022. So keep an eye out for it. Purchase links to all the games in this video are in the description down below. And for some more great Quest 2 horror game ideas, be sure to check out my previous two annual best horror game videos, which you'll find links to in the description down below and also in the link up here. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to like and share it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.